Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to English with Ikram. Lectures of English and Subject Specialist English Test Series. And today I will discuss very important MCQs based on Shakespeare. In my last video I discussed Renaissance period. And uh, before that I discussed 40 very important MCQs from history of Indian literature. And you know that in the history of English literature, Renaissance period is very important. I discussed 20 MCQs from that period. And in that uh, video, I also discussed that Renaissance period is also called Shakespearean period or Elizabethan period. These are very important period of time in, during the history of English literature. So, you know, the importance of Shakespeare, its tragedies, his comedies, and his contribution in English literature. So today, in this session, I will discuss 30 very important MCQs based on Shakespeare's life and work. Why this period of land? Because you are going to appear in lectureship test tomorrow. You know, it's 4th October and tomorrow, 5th October, lectureship test of KPPSC is going to be held. And that's very important. Why this video? And uh, I'm quite sure that some of the MCQs from today's session will definitely come in your tomorrow's paper. And then subject specialist test, that's, uh, it has its own importance. So let's get started. I will explain certain MCQs uh, in respect of uh, Shakespeare. Number one, Shakespeare was born at Stateford on Avon. Stateford was the name of the town where he was born. What was Avon? I have discussed in one of my last videos uh, about the history of English literature. Shakespeare was born uh, at Stateford upon Avon. What's about Avon? What's this? The options are a river on the bank of which Stateford is situated, a hillock on which Stateford was situated, C, both A and B, and D, none of these. So here, the right option is option A Avon is a river on the bank of which Stateford is situated. So Avon is the name of the river. Right? Keep this thing in mind is today I am going to discuss, I am going to add some very valuable information in your uh, knowledge. Number two, how many plays did Shakespeare write in all? 37, 38, 39, or 36? How many plays did Shakespeare, did Shakespeare write in all? The number of plays that Shakespeare wrote is 37. For some people, it's 38, but most agree on this number, 37. The right option is 37. How many sonnets did Shakespeare write in all? Number of sonnets written by Shakespeare, 154, 115, 156, or 14. The number of sonnets written by Shakespeare is 154. What is Shakespeare's Venus and Adonis? What is Shakespeare's Venus and Adonis? A narrative poem, a tragedy, a romance, or a comedy? Shakespeare's Venus and Adonis is a narrative poem. Option A is the right option. Number five. To whom did Shakespeare dedicate his first narrative poem, Venus and Adonis? To whom did Shakespeare dedicate his first narrative poem, Venus and Adonis? All of Southampton, Queen Elizabeth, James I, Ben Johnson. The right option is, option A, uh, the correct name of this person was Henry Riothersley. Henry Riothersley, H-E-N-R-Y, Henry. W R I O T H E S L E Y Henry Riothersley, who was third Earl of Southampton. The right option is option A, Earl of Southampton. The name was this uh, Earl of Southampton was Henry Riothersley. Who called Shakespeare an upstart crow, beautified with our feeders? Who called Shakespeare an upstart crow? Beautified with our feeder, Robert Greene, Thomas Kidd, George Peele, or John Lilly. 
The right option is option A, Robert Greene, who was one of the university wits. Uh, and uh, you know that university wits, this was a phrase which was used for the late 16th century playwrights, and these were educated people during Renaissance period. And uh, Robert Greene especially, he was uh, against Shakespeare that uh, uh, these people, university wits were of the view that he is an ignorant, uneducated pe uh, person. So these were educated people at that very time who wrote different, play, uh, different plays. Robert Greene. Number seven, who wrote the malicious pamphlet entitled A Groat's Worth of Wit Bought with a Million Repentance against Shakespeare? This was written against Shakespeare. A groat's worth of wit bored with a million of repentance. Written against Shakespeare. And who wrote this malicious pamphlet? Robert Greene, Thomas Kidd, George Pele, John Lilly. And I have discussed already that he was against Shakespeare. Robert Greene. So this was written by, this pamphlet was written by Robert Greene, option A. Next, who ridiculed Shakespeare by saying that he knew small Latin and less Greek? Who ridiculed Shakespeare? Kisne mazak uraya Shakespeare ka? That he knew small Latin and less Greek. Ben Johnson, Spencer, Marlowe, or Sidney? The right option is option A, Ben Johnson. Who said Shakespeare has only heroines and no heroes? This is incorrect statement. The right one is Shakespeare has no heroes. He has only heroines. The statement is incorrect. The correct statement is Shakespeare has no heroes. He has only heroines. Who said this? Ruskin, Matthew Arnold, Dr. Johnson or Sidney. This was said by John Ruskin that Shakespeare has no heroes. He has only heroines. Dryden's play All for Love is based on one of Shakespeare's plays. On which of the following plays? Dryden's play All for Love. All for Love. This was a tragedy in blank words, a heroic drama, and this was written by, uh, this was based on Shakespeare plays Antony and Cleopatra, The Merchant of Venus, Romeo and Juliet, The Tempest, and this was uh, based on Antony and Cleopatra, All for Love a blank words tragedy and a heroic trauma written by Dryden. So new information is being added into your knowledge. Now all for love, that is a tragedy, heroic trauma that was uh, been written in blank words and written by Dryden and based on Antony and Cleopatra, a Shakespeare's trauma, right? The phrase, what in a name occurs in? Romeo and Juliet, Othello, Hamlet, or Julius Caesar. What's in a name? That which we call a rose. By any other's name would smell as sweet. These are the complete lines. And this was uh, by, uh, said by Juliet. He means that it does not matter what family Romeo belongs to. What's in a name? That which we call a rose. By any other name would smell it would smell as sweet. In naam mein kya rakh hai? This was said by Juliet, and Juliet means that it does not matter what what family you just from you belong to. It doesn't matter. Right? So this line is from Romeo and Juliet. The title of the novel, The Sound and Fury, reminds us of Shakespeare's which drama, which play, Macbeth, King Lear, Hamlet, or Othello. Life is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. This was uttered by Macbeth uh, when he hears of Lady Macbeth's death in Act 5, Scene 5. So obviously, this was uh, taken from the sound and fury, the title of the novel, The Sound and Fury. It reminds us of Shakespeare's Macbeth, right? And I have uh, told you the background. This was uttered by Macbeth. Uh, when he hears of Lady Macbeth's death in Act 5, Scene 5. Who has written tales from Shakespeare? Charles Lamb, Samuel Rogers, Thomas Love Peacock, John Clare. And uh, written 
Tales from Shakespeare. This was written by option A, Charles Lamb. In which play does Shakespeare attack the Puritans? Twelfth Night, Much Ado About Nothing, The Merchant of Venus, As You Like It. In which play does Shakespeare attack Puritan? So this is option A, Twelfth Night. In Twelfth Night, Shakespeare attacks the Puritan, and you know that Twelfth Night is a comedy, romantic comedy, written in 1601 and 2. Keep this thing in mind, any information? Twelfth Night by Shakespeare, written in 1601. Next, who is the author of Preface to Shakespeare? Preface to Shakespeare, Dr. Johnson, complete name is Dr. Samuel Johnson, Hazlitt, Coleridge or Matthew Arnold. Who is the author of Preface to Shakespeare? The author of this uh, Preface to Shakespeare is Dr. Samuel Johnson and uh, this was published in 1768. Keep this thing in mind, Preface to Shakespeare published in 1768 and by Dr. Johnson. Who has written the critical book characters of Shakespeare's plays? This was a book characters of Shakespeare plays and who wrote this? Hazlitt, Arnold, Coleridge or Edison. So the right option is this was written by characters of Shakespeare, this book written by William Hazlitt and William Hazlitt was an essayist of 19th century and uh, uh, he was a critic and this book was written in 1817. Characters of Shakespeare by William Hazlitt written in 1817, right? Next, name the play in which the hero dies at the end of the fourth act, but the play continues to, to the fifth act. Antonion, Cleopatra, Othello, Macbeth or none. So this is right option is option A, Antony and Cleopatra and uh, in this trauma, in this play, the hero dies at the end of the fourth act, but the play continues to the fifth act. Antony is devastated by the false news of Cleopatra's death and falls on the sword to die. Habar sunte hai wo? Cleopatra ki death ki aur phir wo apni sword pe gir ke mar jata hai. And then uh, at the end of the fourth act he dies, but the play continues to the fifth act. Right? Next. Name the play in which hero and the heroine die together. Very interesting. Name the play in which the hero and the heroine die together. Romeo and Juliet, Titus Adonicus, uh, Coriolanus or Macbeth. And this play is Romeo and Juliet. Hearing from his servant the false news of Juliet's death, Romeo buys poison, takes it and dies. Juliet learns of his death and he stabs her, she stabs herself. So this is very interesting. Jab, uh, Juliet ki death ke pata chalta hai isko, Romeo ko, to Romeo zair le leta hai, aur jab Juliet ko pata chal chai, and she stabs herself, wo apne aap ko maar deti hai. So here, both hero and hero die together, and this is the play, Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. Frailty, thy name is a woman. In which play does, it, does this line occur? Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, Macbeth. Frailty, thy name is a woman. This line is from Hamlet and you know that Hamlet was written in 1599 to 1601. Next, the divinity that shapes our ends. This line comes from, there is a divinity that shapes our ends. These lines come from Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear or none. Right option is Hamlet. Hamlet tells Horatio his friend, Act 5, Scene 5. That uh, divinity that shapes our ends, this was the line, this was the statement that was uttered by Hamlet and he tells this uh, to Horatio who was his friend and this is, is from Act 5, Scene 5. Next, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. 
these lines were taken from Julius Caesar, Macbeth, Othello, or none of these. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. These lines have been taken from uh, the play Julius Caesar. This was a tragedy performed in 1599 and uh, this is in Act 2, Scene 2. Julius Caesar, 1599 by Shakespeare and these lines cover die many times before their death. The valiant never taste of death but once from Act 1, Act 2, Scene 2. What is a uh, rape of Lucius? A narrative poem, a scene in Carlos, uh, an early comedy, or none of these. So, rape of Lucius, that is a narrative poem. In which year were Shakespeare's sonnets published? 1609, 1598, 1616, 1600. Shakespeare's sonnet published in 1609, uh, option A is the right option. Which of the following were the last play written by Shakespeare? Very interesting, The Tempest, Pecles, Symbol Lane, none. Which of the following was last play written by Shakespeare? Shakespeare's last play is The Tempest, written in 1610 to 1611. And this was a classical comedy. The Tempest, the last play written by Shakespeare in the 1610-11 and this is a classical comedy. Who says frailty thy name is a woman? Hamlet to himself, Hamlet to Gertrude, Viola to Olivia, none of these. Frailty thy name is a woman, this was the line said by Hamlet to himself and this was his, his first soliloquy in Act 1, Scene 2. You know that there are uh, eight or nine soliloquies in uh, Hamlet by Shakespeare and the uh, frailty thy name is a woman. This is in his first soliloquy and you know soliloquies mean uh, talking to one's own self, apne aap se baat karna, khud kalami. And this is in Act 1, Scene 2, when where uh, Hamlet says to his, himself, frailty thy name is a woman. Who adopted the character of Caesario? Viola, Cleopatra, Gertrude, and Horatio. The character of Caesario was adopted by Viola, option A, and you know that this is from the uh, romantic comedy Twelfth Night. In which play the this line appears? All that glitters is not gold. The Merchant of Venus, Romeo and Juliet, the Tempest are none of these. In which play this line appears? All that glitters is not gold. And this is from The Merchant of Venus, a tragic comedy, and this line is in Act 2, Scene 7. All that glitters is not gold, from Act 2, Scene 7 of um, The Merchant of Venus, a tragic comedy by Shakespeare. And uh, this was uttered by Prince of Morocco, one of the suitors for uh, Portia, which, who was the heroine of the play, The Merchant of Venus said by Prince of Morocco and he was one of the suitors of uh, the heroine of this, this drama, this play, uh, Merchant of Venus and she was Portia, the heroine. Who was the ghost in Hamlet? King, what, King of Denmark, Queen of Denmark, King Lear or none of these. You know there is a character in Hamlet, the character of ghost and this character was played by uh, the King of Denmark, option A. And he was father of Hamlet, who was poisoned by Claudius. Father of Hamlet, who was poisoned by Claudius. And here, the ghost is the, uh, that father of Hamlet, king of Denmark. This is Shakespeare's shortest play. The comedy of errors, you will see that Hamlet are none of these. The shortest play of Shakespeare is the comedy of errors which is of 1898 lines. Keep this very uh, useful information. That is 1898 lines, comedy of errors, less than 15,000 words. The words were less than 15,000 and the lines were 1898, comedy of errors. And you know that 
uh, in other place there were more than 26,000 words that uh, written by Shakespeare. And this was the shortest drama, the shortest play, the comedy of errors and uh, number of lines 1898, number of words less than 15,000. Who is Toby Belch in Twelfth Night? Twelfth Night, there is a character, Toby Belch, who was he? Uncle of Olivia, lover of Olivia, brother of Olivia, father of Olivia. And you know, Toby Belch in Twelfth Night, he was uncle of Olivia. He wrote, uh, played the role of uncle of Olivia. What is the name of the King Lear youngest daughter? King Lear, the youngest daughter, the, uska naam kya tha? Cordelia, Conrail, Keda, Gertrude, and her name was Cordelia. And the last MCQ is MCQ number 30 or 31. What is the name of Othello's wife? Othello, the hero, the name of uh, Othello's wife was Desdemona, Emilia, Bianca, or Cordelia. That was Desdemona. The name of Othello's wife was Desdemona. These were more than 30 very important MCQs from Shakespeare, his life and work. And you know that Shakespeare is very much important in the history of English literature. And I hope, I am quite sure that some of the MCQs from this session will definitely come in your lectureship or subject specialist test. And I wish you all the best, especially to those who are going to appear in lectureship test tomorrow. And uh, again, best of luck for those who will appear in subject specialist test. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.